Hello, and welcome to the First Brick Property Co- Podcast, episode 14. My name is Hanny, and I'm here joined by our co host. I've heard that he is the world's best soccer defender. Of course, you all know him as KM. KM, how are you going? I'm doing wonderful. Um, you heard correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I am the world's greatest soccer defender. Uh, there is no one greater than me. No one will get past me. Um, 100%. Except for like anyone that has any fitness or stamina or pace or anything. But besides that, no one's getting past me. But <laughs> good. I am... Um, good to know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How's your week? Yeah, pretty good. Can't complain. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, always. Always. Yeah. Yeah. And he, uh how's uh, how are you finding the new the the Michael Jordan? Oh, how series? good is it? I only watched the first episode. Oh, uh, how um, how do you stop? They they release two at a time. Yeah, I, I don't know. Well, I think I was waiting for all of them to come out. Yeah, then five. I'll watch it. Five o'clock every Monday. Don't talk to me. Yeah, I know. That's why I don't I don't message you. <laughs> <laughs> um. Today's uh, today's podcast, we're talking about uh, something that means a lot to you. Very close to my heart. <laughs> um, and if anyone's been listening to more than one episode, they will know that that one thing close to his heart is tax. Yep. Um, so today we've got the, I guess, the property tax podcast uh, episode. Got a good ring to it. Yeah. And we're going to go through everything that's related to property and tax. Yeah. Um, and we've got a very qualified person to go through. So I'm just going to let you talk pretty much today. Yeah, sounds and, good. And um, <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll let you I'll let you reign free, say what you need to. All right, sounds good. Well, we're going to go through a few topics today. The first one is stamp duty, just a nice easy one that most people are already very familiar with. We'll go through income taxes. We'll touch briefly on land tax. And then we'll finish off with capital gains tax. Sounds good. Let's do it. So let's kick it off with stamp duty. Um, So do you have to pay it? Yes. Uh, If you're a first home buyer and you're purchasing uh, your main residence, uh, then no, you don't have to pay it if you're below the threshold and different states have different thresholds. Regardless of whether you're a first home buyer or not, if you're above the threshold, uh, then you will have to pay stamp duty. So check out the different uh, thresholds for the state that you're purchasing in. Um, and and figure out what the threshold is and whether you have to pay stamp duty or not. If you're purchasing an investment property, regardless of the circumstance, you are going to pay stamp duty. Yeah. Is stamp duty tax deductible? So the short answer is no. Yeah. Uh, if you're purchasing your main residence, the answer is no and it ends there. Mm-hmm. If you're purchasing an investment property, the answer is still no. However, at the time of sale, it does get added to your cost base, which is your purchase price, and it therefore reduces your overall profit. And we'll touch more a bit on this later on in the show when we talk about capital gains tax. So how much is it? Um, The calculation for whether you're purchasing a main main residence or an investment property is the same. Uh, However, it does vary between states, and there's a lot of calculators out there to help you work it out. When is it payable? At settlement. Yep. Um, so that's pretty much covers it for stamp duty. Cool. Nice and easy. Just uh, if anyone's listening and not sure what stamp duty is, it's just essentially a tax you pay when you purchase a home. Yep. Um, and yeah, like you said, you pretty much always have to pay unless you're in that exempt first home buyer um, with some of the benefits. Yep. Um, and with the calculators, there are a few, but our favorite calculator on this podcast is the property calculator australia app it does it very easily for you so yeah. go and download that for free nice all right let's move it along to income taxes so just like any other type of income you receive any income you receive from your property is accessible income if you live in your home then there are generally no income taxes however if you do rent out a portion of your home then the rental income you receive is taxable so if you rent out a room even though you're living in the house, the rent that you receive from renting out that room is accessible income. Yep. Keep in mind though, uh, that the expenses you incur in relation to that rental income will also become deductible. So if you rent out a room, you can claim a portion of the interest that you pay on your mortgage, your electricity, and all of that. Uh, but let's focus more on investment properties and anything we cover there 
will apply to this scenario where you rent out a room. Yeah. Um, the concepts are the same. So the rental income you receive is assessable and the expenses you incur in relation to the property are deductible. So how does it work? Um, you put any income you receive as assessable income, any expenses that you incur, you get to claim a deduction for. And then at the end of the year, if you're in a profit position, which means you're positively geared, then the profit is added to your assessable income from other sources. Yep. If you're in a loss position, which means you're negatively geared, then the loss reduces your assessable income from other sources. Yeah. So that just gets added to your normal income from yep. your salary. And, yes. And you're just getting taxed on your normal tax bracket. Yeah. Cool. So what expenses can you claim? So it's generally any expenses that you incur in relation to the property. So things like advertising, strata, borrowing expenses, cleaning, council rates, depreciation, uh, things like insurance, interest on the loans, not the principal, yeah. uh, any land tax that you have to pay, legal fees, agent commission, repairs, uh, and so forth. Importantly, from 1 July 2017, you can no longer claim travel expenses. Yeah, so, that's a big one. Yeah, because <laughs> what used to happen was you'd purchase an investment property interstate. Sunshine Coast. Go to Queensland <laughs> for a holiday and claim a portion of the expense, if not all of it, in yeah. some cases. Yeah. So the ATO has picked up on that and um, you can no longer do that from 1 July 2017. Yeah. So how is the tax payable calculated? Um, this is important because a lot of people think, oh, if I spend this much, I'll get this much back. But yeah. that's not exactly how it works. So let's look at a scenario uh, for someone who earns $100,000 salary. So the figures that we'll go through will take into account the 2% Medicare levy, but they don't take into account the Medicare levy surcharge. Uh, so just keep that in mind while we're going through these numbers. Yep. So first, let's look at someone who doesn't earn any, any rental income at all. So your POYG summary, which is the group certificate, shows gross wages of $100,000 and tax withheld of $26,520. They have no other income, no other expenses. So when you lodge your tax return, the ATO will calculate the tax on $100,000 and that comes to $26,497. They've got tax withheld of $26,520, which means they get a refund of $23. It's just the difference between the two. Yep. And it effectively means that, you know, your employer has withheld the right amount of tax. Yeah. It's only a $23 li refund. It's you know, yeah. basically cancels itself out. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Now, let's look at a scenario of someone who's positively geared. Um, so they've got, let's say they make net rental income at the end of the year of $10,000. Your income minus your expenses, you've got yep. 10 grand at the end. So your tax return will show your gross wages of 100,000 plus your net rental income of 10 grand, which means you've got gross income of $110,000. The ATO will calculate tax on 110. Ten thousand dollars at thirty thousand three hundred ninety-seven dollars. It's a tax you owe on one hundred and ten grand. Mm -hmm. You've already had twenty-six thousand five hundred and twenty dollars of tax withheld from your wages, which means you've got a tax payable of three thousand eight hundred and seventy-seven dollars. Yeah. So you got to pay the gap. Yeah. So the income just gets added to your existing income, and you pay tax on whatever's left yeah. after you've taken into account your tax withheld. Mm -hmm. Let's now look at a negatively geared scenario. So instead of making a 10 grand profit, you've made a net rental loss of $10,000. So your tax return will show your gross wages of $100,000, a net rental loss of $10,000. Gross income will then be $90,000, your 100 grand minus your 10. Yep. So the ATO will then calculate your tax on $90,000, which comes to $22,597. Now you've already had tax withheld from your wages of 26520 which means you'll get a refund of $3,923. Yeah. Which is just the difference of the tax you owe on 90 grand less the tax that you've already paid on your $100,000 income. Yeah. I think that's a, that's an important point to look at uh, because I think like you already said at the start of this part, um, a lot of people think I've lost ten grand. I'm going to get ten grand back. Yeah. Um. If I had uh, expense of ten thousand, I'll get ten thousand. It's not how it works. Yeah. Um. And that's. Uh, I, I guess this comes into our positively geared versus negatively geared conversation we've had a few yeah. weeks ago. I'm uh, just looking at this very quick example. The 
the person getting a tax refund is still walking away with less money. Less money, that's than right. Than the person that's paying more tax. Um, yeah. But I think yet yeah, I think many I think people are getting confused and think negatively geared, you're getting money back because of your deductions. No. Um, but that's a very important point to realise how it's actually calculated. Yeah. So well done, Henning. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Hopefully that's clear to everybody. Um all right, land tax we'll touch on very quickly. So for those of you that don't know, land tax is an annual tax levied at the end of the calendar year on all the property that you own that's above the land tax threshold. Now, um, it's not payable generally on the home that you live in. And of course, different states have different thresholds and land tax rates. In New South Wales, for example, there are two thresholds for 2020. There's the general threshold of 734,000 and then there's a premium threshold of 4,488,000. Uh, so the general rate is taxed at 1.6% of the land value above the threshold. And the premium rate is 2%. So that's the big difference between the general and the premium rate yeah. is that the premium rate uh, is taxed higher. Yeah. Um, that's of the land value. Of the land value and the combined land value that you own. Not, it's not individual for each property. Yeah. It's the combined land value of all the land that you own. Yeah. So we'll have a look at a quick scenario um, just to show how it's calculated. So let's say you've got a combined land value of a million dollars. You pay land tax on the portion above the rate of 734000 because that's the general rate. So in this case, it's 266000 266, which is the difference between your threshold of 734,000 and the value of your land, which is a million, which equates to $4,356. So that'll give you a rough idea yep. of how much land tax you have to pay if your land is worth a million dollars. Um, so we're obviously going through a, through the COVID pandemic yep. um, and the government is introducing measures to help people, um, to help commercial and residential landlords manage their rental properties. So in New South Wales, the support package includes a reduction of up to 25% of the land tax payable for the 2020 land tax year. Um, of course, there's always going to be eligibility criteria. Yeah. Uh, so check the state revenue site for your state for what the criteria is. And of course, different states will offer different packages. Yeah. So see what's available to you. Yeah. The, we did a video on this, uh, it's on our page. Um, regarding the New South Wales support package. And the main thing is to be entitled to the 25% uh, for land tax, you gotta be essentially a landlord that's got a tenant yeah. seriously affected by coronavirus, COVID-19, and they can't make full repayments or are making a significant reduction in their rent um, payments. Yeah. So not for everyone, um, like you said, there are eligibility criteria, um, but it is a little bit of something to try and help out. Yeah. Cool. All right. And finally, capital gains tax. So generally, you pay CGT on the sale of your investment property, but not the sale of the house that you live in, which is the main residence exemption. Um, but as with everything, there are exceptions to yep. the main residence exemption. So if, for example, you've derived rental income from renting out a portion of your home, if you've rented out a room, you may be subject to CGT. Um, if you've claimed deductions for running a home business, so uh, if you run a business from your home and you claim deductions for it, um, you may be liable for CGT in that scenario as well. Only for the portion of the house that you claimed deductions for and only for the period for which you claim the deductions for. Um, so if, you're, if you fall in that bracket, definitely speak to your accountant um, just to make sure that all your calculations are correct. Um, and another one, uh, which a lot of people don't really think of, is if you purchase a house and it's being rented to tenants prior to your purchase, and after settlement, those tenants continue to live in that property, you know, to see out a contract, for example, and you wait for a while before you can move in and you earn the rental income between that period of settlement till you move in. Even though you've got every single intention of using this house only as your main residence, you may be liable to CGT for that portion yeah. because it was used as an investment property for that time. Mm -hmm. um, so keep those kind of scenarios in mind. Apart from that, 
If you lived in your home, you didn't rent it out, there's no CGT payable for a main residence exemption. Yeah. If it's an investment property, um, you'll pay CGT on the profit that you make when you sell the property. Um, otherwise, if you've made a loss, you'll be entitled to a capital loss on the sale. And we'll discuss this a bit later on in this section. Um, if you've held the property for more than 12 months, you may be entitled to the 50% CGT discount. That is, you pay tax on half the profit that you've made instead of all the profit. Yeah. So how is capital gain tax, capital gains, sorry, calculated? Simply, it's the purchase price minus the sale price. However, you are also able to add the cost of some expenses, which weren't deductible while you held the property. These expenses are claimed by adjusting the cost base and your cost base is your purchase price. Yep. So an example of when you can adjust the cost base, um, we mentioned earlier that you can claim the cost of stamp duty at the time of sale. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because the ATO allows you to include incidental costs that you incurred to acquire the asset. Yep. And stamp duty is one of those costs. It's probably the most common one of those costs. Mm -hmm. It's a cost that you incurred only because you purchased your CGT asset. In this case, it's your property. Yeah. So other costs could be things like borrowing expenses, legal fees, and things like lenders, mortgage insurance, but only to the extent that you have not claimed a deduction previously. Yeah. So if you've claimed a deduction, you can't add it to your purchase price. Yeah. Did you know, I don't know if you know this, Mr. Taxman. Yeah. Did you know that buyer's agency fees can be added to the cost base of a property? I did know that. Of course he did know that. He's the, he's the tax man. What was I thinking? But it's, uh, <laughs> it's on me because it wasn't one of the things that I listed here. So that's definitely yeah. on me. 100%. So if anyone's listening, you can definitely add the cost of using a buyer's edge on to your uh, cost base for sure. 100%. So what if you make a loss instead of making a profit? So a loss in this case is referred to as a capital loss. And this is important because there is a difference between a tax or revenue loss, like your negative gearing, yep. um, and a capital loss. They're treated differently for tax purposes. So capital losses cannot be used to offset your regular income, such as wages. So your tax losses, which is your negative gearing, can be used to reduce your wages, yep. but a capital loss can't be used in the same way. Capital losses can only be used to offset other capital gains. Otherwise, um, if you don't have a capital gain with which to offset, you can carry the capital loss forward on your tax return. Um, until you make a capital gain, yeah. you can utilize these losses. Okay. So if you made a, if you purchased a house at 500, sold it for 490, so you've lost 10,000 there, yeah. capital, lo capital loss. Yeah. You can't put it against your income, no. Um, but you can put it against future gains. Yes. And is there a is there a time limit on how long you can hold that? No, you can carry it forward indefinitely, cool. and then use it when it becomes. So twenty it, years later, you can still use it. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's look at a quick scenario, just to help make sense of all of this. So let's say you purchase an investment property for six hundred and fifty thousand, and you pay stamp duty of about twenty five thousand dollars. You rent it out for three years before you decide to sell it. Let's say you also decide to renovate the kitchen before you put the property on the market um, and it costs you $20,000 to renovate the kitchen. Then you sell the property for $915,000. Yep. So you've made a nice little profit there. So let's look at the capital gains calculation. Your cost base will be your $650,000 purchase price plus your $25,000 stamp duty, plus the $20,000 you've spent on the kitchen renovation, which means your cost base for the purposes of calculating your capital gain is $695,000. Yep. Now your capital proceeds is your sale price, so $915,000. So we're not gonna take into account agent fees and things like that, yep. we're just, let's just look at the property itself. So your gross capital gain calculation will be your $915,000 sale price. Yep. Minus your $695,000 cost base to give you a gross capital gain of $220,000. Okay. So your net capital gain calculation will be your $220,000 gross capital gain. Yep. 
you'll be entitled to the 50% CGT discount because you've held the property for more than 12 months. Mm -hmm. So that's $110,000, which means your net capital gain is $110,000. Yeah. So you pay tax on 110? That's right. Cool. So let's look at how the capital gains tax is calculated. Yeah. So it's important to note that your capital gains tax is not a separate tax. Yeah. The profit you make will be added to other sources of income and taxed collectively under the general tax rate. Okay. So let's go back to our previous scenario that we discussed earlier. Yep. So your tax return will show gross wages of $100,000. And let's say you sold the property halfway through the year, so you've made net rental income of $5,000 instead of your 10. Yep. Which, and then you've got your net capital gains of $110,000. So your total assessable income, you add all of that up, is $215,000. So that's essentially how much money you made that year. Yes. Everything together. All together. Yeah. So then the ATO will calculate tax on $215,000 of income. And that comes to about $74,000. So you've had tax withheld from your wages of $26,520. So that'll get deducted from the total tax payable. Yeah. Which means your final tax payable is 40, about $47,000. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Now, let's say instead of making a capital gain, you've made a $50,000 capital loss. Yeah. So this is how your tax return will look. It'll still show your gross wages of $100,000. It'll still show your net rental income of $5,000, which means your total assessable income is $105,000. So you still have to pay tax on one hundred and five dollars but your tax return will also also show capital losses of $50,000. Now, you've got no capital gains with which you can offset this yeah. capital loss. So your tax return will then show carried forward capital losses of $50,000. Yeah. And every year until you use it, it will show your carried forward capital losses. If in a year you, use, you have a $10,000 gain, which you offset, then your tax return will show carried forward capital losses of $40,000. Okay. So and you can use it partially as well. Yeah. Cool. And that will just keep rolling forward on your tax return um, until, you fini until you finish it. Yeah. So then the ATO will calculate tax on $105,000, which is $27,737. You've got tax withheld of $26,520, which means you'll have tax payable of $1,217. Yeah. So keep in mind, you've still made a $50,000 capital loss, yeah. but you still have a little bit of a tax payable because you still made some rental income yeah. from renting out the property. So separate taxes, uh, they're getting measured differently in separate spots. Uh, so you just got to be aware of all that when, yeah. you're, when it comes to tax time. Yeah. So don't just assume that if you've made a capital loss, oh, I've got no tax to pay. Yeah. It doesn't actually work like that. <laughs> yeah. There is a There's difference. always tax to pay. <laughs> yeah. So there is a difference between capital losses and your regular losses. So always keep that in mind. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Just on uh, CGT, um, the, the, you're aware of the six year rule? Yes. Yeah. So uh, I thought it might be good, good to mention the six year rule as well. Yeah. Um, because a lot of people don't know about it and it's quite handy. Yeah. Uh, I'll give it a go. If I say anything uh, factually incorrect, please stop me very quickly. <laughs> um, but essentially, um, what the six year rule is, if you purchase a principal place of residence yep. um, and you, you live in it for a while and your intention was to live in it um, and then you've decided for whatever reason you need to move out, you need to go somewhere else and then you get um, someone to tenant someone to rent your property uh, while you're away because you're you've obviously moved you, you haven't sold the house so you get someone to rent it you get some income out of it yeah it then becomes an investment property however you have six years to make it a principal place of residence again yes um where you where your time resets it's kind of got a little bit mixed up for you yeah. but essentially if i live in a, my principal place of residence for one year and then I move out. And then, Henny, you come and um, become the tenant. Yes. And you you live there for five years. Yep. If I come back and, yes. and live there again. Yes. And then live there for one year, for example, and then decide to sell the house. Yes. Because it's been within six years yes. of, uh, of a tenant being in there, of me being in there, sorry, yep. I won't pay capital gains tax. It's treated as a normal 
principal place of residence. Correct. Correct? Okay. <laughs> Do you want to say it better for me? No, I'd just like to add on to that. Go on. So you don't pay capital gains tax on that property. Correct. So the way this all works yeah. is that the reason you don't pay capital gains tax is because you've elected this property, that first property, yeah. to be your main residence. Correct. Now, the ATO only allows you yes. to pick one property Big for, your main, resi- for <laughs> your main residence. Yeah. So if you selected this property to be your main residence, you can't select another property that you were living in at the time yeah. to be your main residence during that period. Yeah. If you are renting, it's not a problem. Yes. However... If you had purchased another property at the same time and you've claimed main residence on this one, you won't be able to claim main residence on the other one as well. And that may have CGT implications. So keep that in mind. Speak to your accountant. (laughs) Seek some advice. Um, Because yes, it is a rule. And no, a lot of people don't know about it, but you need to understand um, some of the technicalities so you don't get caught out. Correct. For another property. You can only have one principal place of residence. Yes. At any time. You can only elect one property to be your main residence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, question we got notice <laughs> yeah. since we're talking about it. If someone was to purchase their principal place of residence yeah. and then two years later they moved out and bought another place yeah, and the next place became their principal place of residence, does the first place they purchase, it cannot become the PPR again? You can you can switch main residences, but yeah. they can't overlap. I think there might I think yeah. there's a six month period yeah. where it can okay. overlap. Yeah. Um Tough question. If, yeah. <laughs> but other than that, you can still only pick one. You can go back, that's fine. Yeah. But obviously there can only be one at a time. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So that was a nice uh six year old is very uh, it can become very advantageous. As long as you only have one principal place. Yeah, definitely look into it. Um, <laughs> yeah. get some advice yeah. from a professional. Correct. Um, just so you don't get caught out. Yeah. This is just uh, general advice, as always. Always. And the figures are indicative only. Yeah. Um, so always speak to your accountant or financial advisor. Is This uh, podcast does not constitute tax or financial advice. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you have anything else to add? To no, this? I think that was it. Um, uh, I, I really enjoyed it. It was a good episode. Yeah, we went through it pretty quickly as well. Yeah. Um, but I guess if anybody has any questions on anything that... Uh, that we've gone through, yeah. send them through. Yeah. Um, I'd be more than happy to do a part two tax episode. Yes, I'm sure you would. So no issues there <laughs> at all. Uh, I'd be happy to listen to it. I think it was a great episode because you did most of the talking. <laughs> People didn't have to hear my voice. Um, but yeah, so thanks to everyone for listening. Uh, like like Henny mentioned, if you have any questions regarding tax or uh, your situation or not, send it through. Um, obviously, we'll try and give... Uh, general advice will can be specific to your needs um but if you do need a accountant or financial advisor feel free to reach out to us and we can help you get to and um, the appropriate people yep uh you can find all our content on our socials facebook instagram youtube linkedin tiktok just search first rig property our youtube page is getting uh quite quite popular we're getting putting a lot of videos up there we're getting a lot of people um listening and watching over there it's great um and yeah if you want any other topics discussed or if you have any questions we might do a Q&A episode soon episode 15 is coming up soon maybe we'll do it then who knows um, but send your questions through to hello at firstbreak.com.au or send us a message on our social platforms if you enjoyed the episode we'd love a review um, this helps us get up higher in the charts and allow more people to find us and listen and learn so give us your five star reviews I actually saw um, the latest charts for business in uh, business podcasts in Australia. I might keep that till next week, tell you where we ranked. Um, but we're doing pretty good. So Sounds good. If you know anyone that listens or would be interested in um, property or investment, tax advice, uh, tax podcast, anything like that. Pass, pass the pod. Pass the pod. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you knew it. Pass the pod. Thanks, guys, for listening. Buying property is our passion. Helping you do it is our mission. See you guys.